Good evening and welcome. Let's take a look at our top story this hour. India has rejected China's renewed claim to the Galwan River Valley in Ladakh, which has become a flashpoint between India and China. The Ministry of External Affairs of India has released a statement which says, and I quote, the attempt by the Chinese side to now advance exaggerated and untenable claims with regard to the line of actual control are not acceptable, unquote. Earlier, the Chinese foreign ministry had said that the Galwan Valley is located on the Chinese side of the line of actual control in the west section of the China-India boundary. For many years, the Chinese border troops have been patrolling and on duty in this region. This is the second time China has made a claim over Galwan Valley. China says that its troops have patrolled the river valley for many years. But the ground reality is that Galwan Valley lies on the Indian side of the LAC and has never before been a point of contention between the two sides. It was the PLA that first claimed sovereignty over the Galwan Valley immediately after the face-off was confirmed. The Indian Foreign Ministry dismissed the claim as exaggerated and untenable. Beijing once again blamed India for triggering Monday's standoff. Foreign Ministry statement went on to say that since April this year, Indian troops have unilaterally built roads, bridges and other facilities in Galwan Valley. China accused Indian troops of deliberately trying to change the status quo at the border. Our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sadant Sibyl, is joining us for more on this. Good evening to Sadant. Now, India has categorically rejected Chinese claims over the Galwan Valley incident. The MEA has said that it was China that had been hindering normal and traditional patrolling patterns since May, which of course in turn has resulted in that violent clash. What else has the MEA said? Well, Alison, it's a pretty significant statement and it's the second time in past few days that India has rejected Chinese claims over the sovereignty for the Galwan Valley because uh, remember it's uh, yesterday that the Chinese Foreign Ministry put out a detailed statement uh, saying that Galwan Valley belongs to China and it's a rebuttal to that statement uh, because China has been claiming that so since the 15th of June uh, standoff between the, both the countries. But what is significant about this statement is the fact that it details the entire situation since May what has been happening between India and China at the LSE. Uh, so the, the detailed statement gives the timelines and says that since uh, May there have been standoffs and in fact there have been uh, skirmishes as well between both uh, the countries. In fact, in mid-May, uh, what the MEA says is that the Chinese tried to transgress into the LSE and that was, uh, the, uh, the, that was stopped by a strong response and appropriate response was given by the Indian Army. And then thereafter, there was the six of June meeting. That was the meeting after which a consensus was uh, arrived between both the Indian Army and the Chinese Army that there should be a disengagement. But what the Chinese did and they have been doing in the past as well, stabbing in the back, they did not follow the consensus and in fact tried to unilaterally change the situation on the ground and that led to the skirmishes and a standoff on 15th of June that led to the death of 20 Indian soldiers. Of course, there are casualties on the Chinese side as well, but the Chinese government hasn't released the number. But by and large, uh, it is a point by point detailed statement, the first major detailed statement, but also the fifth reaction by the MEA on the standoff between both the countries uh, that led to the death of 20 Indian soldiers on 15th of June and uh, a significant one and given the fact that how the Indian Prime Minister has also spoken two times about uh, giving a befitting reply to the Chinese we have seen a growing sentiment against China here in India and this happening at a backdrop of a uh, uh, lot of comments negative comments coming from the Chinese army or whether it's by the Chinese Foreign Ministry in fact uh, we have seen how the Chinese uh, foreign uh, the Chinese government perhaps uh, or someone in the Chinese government has been removing statements put in place by the Chi by the Indian mission on Chinese apps, whether it is WeChat or whether it's their counterpart of the Twitter 
clearly these statements have been removed at the behest of someone powerful in uh, the government there in china and these statements have been put in place by the indian mission uh, and removing them is like the indian government saying uh, that the uh, that the statement put in place by the uh, chinese foreign ministry or perhaps the chinese embassy should be removed but that cannot happen here in india given the fact that it's a democratic country and perhaps uh, to to change the narrative or to control the narrative uh, the chinese government has removed uh, the statement but by and large uh, uh, we see an increased tension between new Delhi and Beijing amidst the covid pandemic we have seen how china has been very belligerent when it comes to uh, uh, the the entire neighborhood whether it's india vietnam indonesia malaysia there's a list of countries amidst the covid pandemic and uh, we all know the origin of covid as well so clearly china is of course facing the pressure but despite the pressure it is trying to destabilize not just the region but the entire world Sudan, thank you for that report. That's our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sudan Sabal, bringing us the latest on the tensions there in Ladakh. And of course, he will keep us up to date with any future developments.